Um, welcome again. Here I am in Easy's Puppy Pen again, and we're going to talk to you today about puppies and dogs wanting to chase moving objects. So, moving objects, cars, bikes, skateboards, um, and for Easy, it's cats, it's ponies, it's the leaf blower, it's the vacuum, um, it's the hose. So lots and lots of different different moving objects, and they're all it's all the same. So with a baby puppy, what we're going to do is look at making sure we can prevent these things from happening, um, and we do that by predicting. Um, and the way we predict is we watch our puppies when we're out and about and at home, and we're looking for any sign of them showing interest in moving objects. Um, and when we're out and about, we're looking to see whether they have any interest there as well. And when I say interest, the very first thing that I'm looking for is just a fleeting little glance. Um, don't wait until um, the puppy is full on running at something, um, barking, screaming, um, and getting so, so overexcited that they can't think and they can't take treats from you. Um, I want to start working on this well before they get to that stage. Um, so for baby puppies, that's nice and easy, like easy is easy. Um, we're going to do that for, from the start. Um, and also bear in mind that some breeds are going to present this as an issue to you a bit more than others. Um, if you've got a working breed, then it's sort of a given that they're probably going to be obsessive over movement at some stage. Um, some more than others and I'm not saying that it's only working breeds but I, I think the working breeds are they're the ones that people contact me about the most so the big ones for me is we own cats so I make sure that she doesn't have access to the cats unless I'm around to help uh, manage situations if they arise and then we have our training phase as well and the training phase would be when Easy is calm, so her calmest moments in the day, and clearly she's not calm all the time. I pick filming when she is calm, by the way, um, so she looks good. Um, so um, I pick times when she's calm. I have really, really yummy treats. Whatever she wants, I have. And I make sure that I find the cats when they are quiet as well. And I start rewarding her for just hanging with me and not being overexcited by the cats. She's found her favorite treats. She's found her favorite dry treats. Um, I'm very lucky, Houndstooth um, supply, would you look at that face? Um, that face is saying, please, please. So I'm very lucky to have some dried treats that the dogs absolutely go crazy for. And when we're using treats, we really do want to be using something the dogs go crazy for. And she does go crazy for these. Um, I'll pop them under there, but I am going to give you some. So I'm going to reward her for calm behavior when the cats are around. Um, if there are any situations where I feel that she is going to chase the cat, and that would be, I guess, free running in the yard and the cats are out moving around more than they normally would. That's not a time that I'm going to let um, her be out free with the cats. So I want to really pick my moments as to, to when they will be together. And when I can't supervise, um, the number one thing, don't let them practice. The more they practice chasing something, the better they'll get at it. Um, and the more adrenaline um, that they build in their system, and the more desire to want to do to do that. So the cats are probably going to be my most challenging in that the cats do free run around. So managing the situation until we've got good control over easy is just gonna take some time. So that's going to be the hard one. And I'm going to show you a quick video now that I actually let easy show you how evil she can be with the leaf blower because that was the first thing that she decided was really, really cool. Um, and it's because it's it's air, it's moving, but it's air, but it's still something moving. Um, so I'm going to show you that video. Um, I did set her up so that she would show you how bad she could be. And then I also showed you the training that's been going into um, changing that behavior. 
Keeping in mind the video you're about to watch, um, I've been working on this behavior since she was oh, probably about oh, 12 weeks old and she's about 18 weeks old now. So you can see there's great progress that's being had there. Okay, so watch that video and I'll come back to you later. to see that easy is not always perfect <laughs> um, I guess now let's talk about the things that we do so number one if your puppy is distracted by something and they can't possibly take a treat from you they're just really super aroused and they can't they can't think is how we sort of look at it um, if your puppy is like that then you need to have distance from whatever your puppy is aroused by Okay, so that could be the leaf blower in Easy's case, it could be a car, it could be a bicycle, it could be anything. So first of all, find out the distance at which your puppy can ignore the distraction that's happening. Um, now for Easy with the leaf blower, that was about 30 meters away. So sometimes you need to um, set these situations up, have a helper. So in my instance, what we did with Easy, as my partner started the leaf blower uh, about 30 meters away and she was pretty well um, she didn't even really know that the leaf blower was happening at that distance it was totally irrelevant so that gave me a chance to reward her for behaviors that i liked so just being calm paying attention to me you know laying down doing doing just simple things <coughs> then over time he got closer and closer and closer i was constantly watching her reaction if at any time she couldn't focus on me or she couldn't take the treats from me, then that told me we were progressing too fast. So distance is your friend when you're dealing with these things. Keep distance happening. Work within what the puppy's capable of. Now I'm up to having the leaf blower right beside her and I can get her focus on me and off, off the object. Okay, and the reason that things are progressing so well for easy is that I saw this behavior pop up early on. So she hadn't had months and months of practicing chasing the leaf blower before I decided to address it. When you're out walking your puppy, I'm constantly watching them. So what you'll see with a puppy that's going to get excited by a car is they'll be walking and the car will go past and you'll just see a tiny little head flick, nothing else. They'll keep walking with you, nothing else. But they've clearly said to you, wow, okay? It's wow, 
It's not wow, 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 wow just yet. But with repetition um, of them seeing this moving item or object, um, the wow factor is going to build um, significantly over time. So the time to address that is as soon as the puppy goes, wow, that was cool. As soon as I see a puppy do that to anything, I take note of what it was that grabbed their focus and now I'm going to start working with that. And it's exactly as I said, rewarding them for just ignoring and being calm at a distance they don't notice and then gradually getting closer to, to whatever that, that object is that, that's grabbed their focus. Um, I think, you know, often people just wait until it's a serious issue before they go, oh gosh, what am I gonna do now? And now you've got a dog that's on the end of the lead, as I said, flying, barking, screaming, because they're desperate to be able to chase whatever it is. Yes, that's my bait bag. You are quite right. You want some more treats? Ooh, good girl. Um, so you, you need to just be a little bit proactive there. Because once you've got the dog that is full-fledged chasing, it's a bit like when I showed you easy with the um, leaf blower, I needed to start at a huge distance. Um, and I mean, that's easy when it's something at home like a leaf blower because I've got total control over that. If your dog's chasing bikes and cars and things like that, it's now gonna make exercise really difficult because now you're going to have to source out places where you can exercise your puppy or your dog where there is a huge distance from whatever it is that attracts their attention. Um, and it is going to be a slow process. There is no magic cure here, okay? So many people contact me and they just want that magical cure to, to solve this issue. Um, it is not easy. Hence why I say prevention is so, so much better um, than needing to deal, deal with this later on. So I think they're probably the main key points. Um, so you like that. Um, so big, big take home for you guys. Um, seriously, if you've got a puppy, Think about your management, okay? There is nothing wrong with having a puppy pen set up um, like I have here. This is on my veranda. She's only out here while I'm home. If I'm not home, she's in her inside puppy pen. And the reason she's in her inside puppy pen, she's a border collie. If I left her in this outside puppy pen while I wasn't around to supervise her, I could end up with a puppy that suddenly developed an interest in chasing the birds that went past, or the cats when they randomly go past, the other dogs, uh, maybe other people walking in the family walking past. So if I'm around when she's out here, I can be watching what's happening and taking note of if I need to uh, train something or, or desensitize her to something happening around. Um, the inside puppy pen, obviously it's a much more controlled environment. You know, I can control what she sees in there. She can't see the birds running past. Um, the cats are much more confined in there. They can't run past. Um, if you lived in suburbia, um, there's not people walking past the yard that would stir the dog, cars going past, bikes. Puppies can practice a lot of things when they're left outside unsupervised. And by the time you know that there's a problem, um, it's a full-fledged problem. So I don't want any of those things happening. Hence why outside pen area is only for while I'm around. Inside pen area is while I'm not around um, so that I can be sure she's not practicing any of these behaviors. Um, keep in mind, these uh, behaviors usually um, come about in the first 12 months or they start in the first 12 months of your puppy's life. So manage them well during that first 12 months um, reward them for nice, calm behaviour. Even if your puppy is perfect around all these moving things, don't take that for granted. Reward the calmness around all of those sorts of things um, and then you won't need to deal with a problem later on, hopefully. And be realistic. If you own a working breed, um, even terriers, you know, lots of dogs, but particularly if you own a working breed, these dogs are bred to react to movement. That's what makes them the awesome sheepdogs they are. So 
just just be really really cautious about that okay so till next time enjoy your puppies hey you little easy you're a good girl <laughs> yeah good girl Jolla, my puppy. <laughs>